Hey, what's up, beautiful Bailcast listeners? Welcome to another episode of Bailcast. As you can see, I'm Gio. And as you can see, that over there is Bart. And as you can still see, we're still in our own separate rooms. But not because we're in quarantine. I'm technically- we had a big ass fight. No, it's because I'm out of quarantine now, but just to be extra, extra safe. So CD said, uh, CDC says to, after your first negative test, wait 10 days and you can come out. But just to be extra, extra safe, we're like, you know what? We'll just start on a full round week with grandma. So yes. um, grandma still hasn't been able to come yet. So it is once again, the 5 a.m. podcasts. Oh yeah. I'm so excited about that. Not really. Before it's always so, wakes up. <laughs> uh, it's always, so like, it's not, I guess everyone goes to this, right? But it's always like, um, you wake up and at first you're like, what the fuck? Where am I? Oh shit. And then you're like, all right, okay. I got to get up for whatever it is that you got to do with that school work or whatever. But then because it's winter, at least for a cold ass person like me, as soon as my little toe like goes out of the blanket, I'm like, and then I get really cold and I'm like, all right, I'm just going to chill like just two minutes. I'm chill two minutes, you know, like in my warm bed. And then two, two minutes turns into like 30 additional minutes of me laying in bed going like, I got to get out. I got to get out. That's like me too. You don't do that? No, no, even. No, never. No, no, I know, but I'm a hot person, right? I'm a hot person, but when it's in the winter time and it feels so cold, I mean, warm in the blankets and you can feel how cold it is outside. It's actually really hard for me to get out of bed too. No, I've tested you because I'm just like, how does he do this? No, no, no. And like, you don't know the internal battles that go on. Oh, I see. Because you took, still get up at the same time. No, this took years of training. So when I was a kid, I'd be the kid or my dad or my mom has to come and wake me up like 10 times. I'm like, okay, come up. And my, mom, my dad would be like, at least sit up, okay? At least sit up. Don't lay there. Don't wait. Okay, I'm like, fine. So I sit up. And I end up going, <laughs> like that. I go back to sleep. And my dad would come back, what are you doing? Because, like, obviously it feels so good, right? And you don't want to get out of bed because it's so warm and toasty. Oh, and when you, yeah. when you get out, there's that abrupt shock. So I for sure still feel that until this day. It's just that I have years of training of um, fighting that. So if I know I have something to do, I just get out. I'm like, all right, I got it, I got it. But then it's definitely still way harder, although it doesn't seem like it on the outside, but on the inside, it's way harder than getting up during the summertime. Where yeah, because like, you're good. kind of hot and everything else is already kind of hot. Yeah. Yeah, no, you're, you're really good about that. I've always been that kid too. My mom actually left me a few times. You know what's the uh, toughest though? Have you ever got out of a sleeping bag when you're camping? Did you even hear that I was in the middle of a fucking sentence? Yes, I did. Okay, tell me about your stupid sleeping bag. I'm going to go back in quarantine. I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> I know. Stay in that goddamn room. Uh, what about, so, wait, what? Oh, when you're camping, sleeping bag, outdoors, it's really, really cold. I actually, that's easier for me because I'm excited. What? Yeah, because I'm excited. I'm it's excited to see my friends. It's freezing outside this I know, but, it's, but I think it's part of the whole experience. You know what I mean? Like, you're already not on a mattress. So like, at least in my mind, I already start taking out all the comforts of the stuff that ho- keeps me from getting out of bed. So for one, mm. I'm in the comfort of my own home. I know when, as soon as I wake up, I have the shower or I have like snacks in the kitchen, you know, like I know yeah. what I have access to, but if I'm camping, I don't have access to anything and it's all survival mode now, right? My version of survival mode, which obviously we glamp a lot of the time, but um, it, I'm, I'm faster. I think the excitement of seeing everyone all fucked up and groggy in the morning and like their head all crooked, like their hair is all fucking bed head crooked. Like that is way more exciting than staying asleep. Like I'm a FOMO type of person, you know, like I don't like to miss out on things. So camping is easy. Like I'll probably be the first person out. Like I get oh, excited. Dang. You act like you've never camped with me. No, it just feels, I, I guess it's so surprising based off your personality. With you know? my personality, like, no, it's you want, like so no, you're trying like, to stay in that room. No, it's like, it's like, uh, imagine like you, I know you love animals, right? You love animals so much to the point that any second you can go back to being vegetarian, right? And then you, you don't, you feel, you even feel guilty eating meat just because uh, you love animals so much. That's right. your personality. That's, that's your, those are your character traits, right? Yeah. Yeah. But then all of a sudden you're like, oh yeah, when I go camping, I love killing animals. I see a deer, I just go, whoosh. 
I see a fucking raccoon. I just go, Ksh, Ksh. you know, I just, you know me, I'm a FOMO kind of person. So if everyone's out hunting, I just grab a snake and I just go, Ksh. you know, so it's like, it doesn't match your personality. That's why. Yeah. That's pretty extreme, huh? Yeah. Cause that's how well, you are. Okay. You have, all, you stay in bed for an extra hour and then oh, you, yeah. and you can't wait to come out when it's like, now it's like negative 30 before below zero. Yeah. There's freaking yeah. icebergs well, melting next to you. Would this change your perspective on it? Uh, I'm a fucking metiche. I'm a nosy person. I know. You're, you're right. Yeah. I'm a nosy person. Uh, only with you, though, actually. I, I don't give a shit about anything else. But only with you, I'm really nosy. So because I'm so nosy, maybe that. That's probably why I want to wake up so early. So I could see. Like I said, like I want to see what everyone, like how fucked up everyone looks in the morning. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. You always see a different side of a person when you go camping with them or when you go to the gym with them. I think that's when you see like the most dynamic side of people. Yeah. I like seeing, um, especially if you do like a little bit of CrossFit with someone. That's what is that do. more? Cause you know, like when you're just hitting uh, sets, my set, your set, my set, your set. It's, oh, there's a lot of resting. It's, it's tough. You know, it's tough, especially trying to like, uh, it's not cardio tough though. Yeah, try, it's it, it's tough when you're trying to get to like failure, right? So yeah, it's tough. But then when you're doing like a circuit or like CrossFit, and you got like five, ten rounds of something, and it's twenty minutes of moving weights around, then you see who that person is. That's true. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, when you're lifting, ooh, because when you're lifting weights, like there's still an essence of, essence of cool. You know, like you can still remain very composed because you're probably going to do like a rep of it, especially if you're trying to go heavy. Like you don't go all balls to the wall, you know? And you could distract. Like if I'm tired, I could, can, I could start a conversation that I know is going to be at least two, three minutes long. Yeah, with CrossFit, for sure. You're right. Like that's when you start seeing people's like limbs and like, like they start like flailing a little bit. Like any element of cool, that's it. That's gone. And it's all survival mode. Yeah, and you know so there's yeah, no talking. Beautiful. So there's no way around it. Ah, oh, I miss. I miss doing cross, CrossFit, honestly. You like that more than working out real, like like regular weights? Um, Not more than, but I think at this point right now, maybe because we've been indoors a little bit more than usual. Um, like, And I also, I also miss training with people. Uh. Yeah, like I miss it. Like when we used to train, it was always like at least three or four of us. So like it was always cool. Like um, it's easy to kind of slack off a little bit when it's just you by yourself. And you're like, at least me, I can only speak for myself. But like if I'm trying to beat a time or a run or whatever, like I'll kind of take it easy on myself. And I'm like, no, no, it's okay. You know, you're tired, whatever. But then as soon as someone else is in the mix and they're killing it, you're like, oh, fuck, I don't want to be the fucking the fucking heavyweight, not heavyweight. What is it? Like the dead weight here. Like I want to catch up. I want to keep up with my, with my team or whatever. Yeah. So I just missed that. I miss training in a group. Training in a group is super uh, fun. That's it like, is. That's why I like martial arts so much. That part's super fun. Cause it's almost like it's mandatory to be in a group. Like that's why you don't really see me shadow boxing on my own. Cause it's not as fun. I see you shadow boxing on your own every day. Like, Yesterday you were shadow boxing on your own. That was that's not considered shadow boxing. Shadow boxing is like me setting uh, aside some time, getting a warm up in before I even shadow box. I'm doing it for like thirty minutes straight, like a workout. Me moving around like I look like I'm fighting. No, that's not shadow boxing. Ah, uh, I see. I see. Shadow boxing okay, is like yeah, like me putting a broomstick on my back is not squatting. Me warming up for fifteen minutes, taking pre workout, putting on knee sleeves. I'm about to squat. You know. Okay, gotcha. All right. Well, fine. How do you shadow box in a group? I don't know. Train martial arts in a group. Oh, I see. So like for me, the community is a huge deal too. That's what I'm saying. Like where um, if it wasn't a huge deal and I was like one of those solo athlete guys, it'd be so easy for me to shadow box for an hour every day. Because most yeah. boxers, their work is like a lot of personal, personal work, you know? Yeah. But for me, I think what I love about the martial arts aspect is everyone dying at the same time. Yes, that's what, that's I love what I that like. too. That's what I like about it. Yeah, I like it too. I like us all going into 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 battle together. Yeah, yeah and it's cool. Uh, you see everyone lining up against the wall, everyone putting on their gear, everyone warming up, everyone talking. 
like that whole environment I love. It feels like, like, like practice. Yeah. I love that whole environment. Yeah. Do you miss that in weight training? Cause you know how we always train in like in a big ass group and then Taika had to mess it all up. No, for sure. I, I miss that a lot in weight training too, where when we had like kind of like our official barbell powerlifting team. Yeah. I really enjoyed that where we all meet up and we train. Um, the only thing that's tough with that is those were like three, four hour days. Yeah. Remember yeah. we thought it's like, we always think we're so busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we look back and we're like, fucking kids. We were not that busy. Yeah. Like those are like some, cause like, you know, sometimes, um, like everyone has a different warm up routine. Yeah. Some people come in, they're ready to rock and roll. Some people come, yeah. in, they got a foam roll for an hour. Some people come in and they, they immediately just start talking with other people. And then where everyone's already halfway done with the first workout. And then they're like, Oh shit, I need to catch up. They're barely so, putting on their knee sleeves. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, everyone's different. But even, even then, it's still fun, you know, because everyone's yeah. together. So that's what I liked about it. But I think because of that and powerlifting, like the stronger you get, your workouts just take longer. Yeah. You're know, a 200, 300 pound squatter. Like you do bar, plate, plate quarter, you're at a working set, right? Like yeah. you're, that's like three sets. But if you're a 500 pound squatter, 600 pound squatter, you're doing like plate, two plate, three plate, four plate, maybe four plate and a quarter. And like these days when I was getting really close to hitting 500, it would take me 45 minutes to warm up to my working set. Wow. Isn't that crazy? So I'm like, um, yes and no. I mean, it sounds crazy on paper, right? But like when you're doing it, it doesn't feel like it takes that long. Yeah. But for me, like I'm, I'm in the gym and then, you know, like I'm always on a time crunch, right? Like I get into the gym at six. I know I got to be out by eight and it's seven o'clock and I haven't hit my working set yet. And I haven't talked to anybody. But I'm just doing my work. Well, you're also recording your crazy videos. So maybe that's it too. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, that's true. Trying to find the perfect angle and shit. That takes yeah. a minute. Yeah. But I do miss, yeah. it. I miss the, the whole team like working out. It's really fun. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. I hella miss that shit. You know, um, like now it's like, we're, we're nearing the end of the year. Thank God. Like, I love how I'm like, like, yes, 2020 is almost over. Cause it just feels like, 2020 is this fucking cursed year so anything horrible or out of the ordinary that happens like i'm no longer surprised you know what i mean i'm like uh it's expected it's 2020 so the fact that we're in like december of 2020 and like right around the corner i see 2021 i feel like like magically this this evil spell of a year is gonna like end and then like 2021 is gonna be this new like like free bright happy environment yeah so i'm like yeah in 2021 we're gonna get back to that you know like one of the goals that i have for 2021 um is just to have more time for myself for yourself you know what i mean yes so masturbate more time, time for myself huh you want to masturbate some more um i guess i mean i wasn't really thinking about masturbating oh are you talking about but, time i mean yourself? that's that's self care. Because when like I think about train... myself, I'm only thinking about jacking off. Really? No, I'm just kidding. Oh, okay. No, like just self care time. Like train more. Like get on that schedule. Like um, do more of my own like little creative projects. Like this year for sure has been more about uh, you know building barbell more, cleaning that up, um, and. Yeah, just Taika. We've been on lockdown, so it hasn't been a lot of like, like um, solo me time right now, you know. And yeah. I know that that's like this this privilege to have, but I'm like, yeah, I want to strive for that, you know, because I feel like if you don't ever make a an emphasis on anything when it comes to yourself, at least this is how I operate. I catch myself tending to other people or other things before I tend to myself more. That like I have to make it a point to be like, no, you're gonna do this for your fucking self. So like, you know, that, what that's what I want to do. From doing things for yourself, you just feel guilty. <sighs> yeah, yeah. I feel like there's so many other things um, that I prioritize. Where I'm like, oh, I'll get to my stuff later. Like it's okay because I think I know once I have time for my own thing, then. Um, Obviously, I won't feel guilty that I have these other things that are lingering or that are like unfinished, you know? 
Like, I just I feel guess, like I it's guess not- I kind of I kind of understand what you're talking about a little bit, but a little bit I also don't. Because for me, um, I feel like there's necessities, right? Yeah. Like necessities like like gas in the car. Like if you don't put gas in the car and you don't get an oil change, that that car is not running. And so I feel myself as a like a vehicle, right? Like a machine to get things done. So there are some necessities for me that I know I have to take care of myself for me yeah. to be a useful machine for other people. Yeah. That part. But then the other part that I do relate to you that I always put off, like for example, uh, I come home and it's trash day and I already see that the trash people have already come and then there's plastic trash cans are just all empty and like all disheveled because you know, like when the p- trash people come, they don't put it back neat. And I look at it and I, I go, can, should I put those in or can I run inside and I know how excited Taika will be to see me? And I'm not that excited. I'm like, um, I'll put those away later. So that's why I always just end up going in first. And then sometimes I end up leaving the trash out for like an extra five days because every time I come home, I, I hit the same dilemma. Yeah. Uh, well, I think because my necessities are obviously different than yours, right? Um, but real quick, let me introduce our first sponsor. All right. So we know that the holidays are right around the corner. I think it's like less than 16, 17 days at this point. Yep. Um, and um, we're all looking for ways to stay connected. Like right now, I think California went to uh, full lockdown again. So just seeing your relatives or seeing the people that you love just becomes a little bit more difficult, especially because case in point us, you know, like you uh, caught Corona. You don't want to, you don't want to spread it to your parents, but like you want to spend time with them. So, um, skylight frames is a photo frame that you can update instantly by uh, email from anywhere. So it makes, uh, the connection still, still feel strong, still feel like, you know, you guys are still interacting. And this is something that I actually got from my mom. Uh, I think when we went on the first lockdown, um, so it's this really cool frame. It looks it, it it looks just like a like a regular picture frame. Uh, I got her a white one, and uh, when I gave it to her, at first she was kind of like slightly afraid of it because she's not very um, technologically. Savvy. Yeah, like she just she gets overwhelmed when like there's too many buttons and there's too many options. So as soon as I gave it to her, she's like, "Oh, what's this? What do I do? Are you gonna walk me through it?" And I'm like, "No, relax, mom. This thing's really really cool. All I had to do was plug in the frame." And then I created a, a personalized email for her because the email is where you send the pictures that you want to automatically upload into this frame. And that's what I absolutely love about it. That all you do is um, you take whatever picture you want to share with the person that you love, you email it to them, and then boom, within, I want to say seconds, the, the picture automatically pops up and it's like on this rotation. So it's really cute because she'll just be like, hey, you just added a picture, didn't you? And I'm like, yup. So like it keeps her looking for things to like, like looking forward to, to seeing it like, oh, did Gio send me something today? So she always gets surprised or like, I like getting that text from her saying like, oh, that's a good picture. And I'm like, oh, surprise. So she really likes it. It's really user friendly. Um, and it's just such a thoughtful gift, you know, because like nowadays who has any picture like printed pictures? You know, like, I don't know. We're not about that anymore. Yeah. So definitely hit up Skylight Frames. It's such an awesome, heartwarming gift. And for everyone listening right now, you guys are going to get $10 off your purchase of a Skylight Frame when you go to skylightframe.com and enter code BAIL, B-E-A-W. Yep, $10 off your first purchase of Skylight Frame. Just go to skylightframe.com and enter code BAIL. Let me spell it out. S K Y L I G H T F R A M E dot com promo code fail. And we are back. Um, what I was saying was, yes, your necessities are different than mine. So I think for you, you, you have to train, right? Like you have to train cause then it like puts you at a balance. But for me, I don't have to, I don't feel imbalanced when I don't. Uh, I see. And I, I guess I'm speaking specifically about training. Yeah. Cause I still get like, I'm, I still do something, you know, whether that's playing with Taika or going on a walk or going on a bike ride or going to, on a hike, like I'm still getting some form of, of, of physical resistance in, you yeah. know, it might not be as strenuous as it was once was when I was, you know, actively powerlifting or doing, you know, wads or whatever. 
Um, but I'm still being active, but now like, uh, I do want to get back into some sort of strength sport though, for sure. Like I miss, I miss my meathead day, my meathead days for sure. I miss them. Do you feel like you'll want to do it back at barbell or just anywhere? Well, I don't know if that's possible anymore. Right. We're moving. So, okay. No, like, unless just, we open. Cause even like down the street, there's like a CrossFit gym. And then I've been trying to, but I'm talking about 2021. Oh, I see. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're in December. You, so know? you probably join like a CrossFit gym in Las Vegas or something. It's so wild to me that, I, that we're going to be <laughs> Vegas residents, but yeah, somewhere out there for sure. Like I do also want to get back into like, uh, like volleyball. Like I want to do all of that stuff, but the goal first is to, uh, just, not remove myself from barbell because that just sounds like I'm going away because I'm not, but like have it be more, um, self-sustained, you know, like it's like, it's, it's pretty self. I don't even know how to explain it. Do you know what I'm talking about? I know what you're talking about. I think for people that okay. don't understand business, um, it's more like trying to get it where it's, um, you don't, you're not involved in the day to day. Right. And that way you can keep your mind in the management space. Right, right, right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly that. Um, so just making sure that, you know, all the right teams and the right people um, can carry things out. And then I just eat, like, I just have to occasionally check in with big picture ideas or whatever, or just to see where, where it is that we're going, you know, like set yeah. the goals for the year and then be like, you, 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 you guys got it. You guys got it. They carry it away. Maybe in like every quarter, every three months. Every quarter I check in, give me the status report. Oh, we're right on track. Let's fucking, let's go, you know, to kind yeah. of live a little bit more, more balanced life. Yeah. If people are like uh, McDonald's uh, connoisseurs like me, then this example will work out. It'd be like, uh, uh, if the manager is stuck at the register, like every minute of the hour, cashing in the transactions, then there's no manager thinking about, is this the best place to put apple pie? Do the safe do the kids uh, play pen? Does it need more safety precautions? Um, right. Like, should we have the tables facing here because the sun comes in and blasts people in the eyes? So there's no yeah. one thinking on the management level. But yeah, like right now, bo both you and I are highly involved in the day to day, and the goal is to be able to get every, the whole team up and running so that they can take care of all the transactions, and then that way we can really start looking at what's the best way to maximize on the management level. Yeah. It's so wild to me that I own a business. Like sometimes I'm just like, like I revert back to the little Geo that wanted, like that would have the aspiration to own a business. And then that immediately getting shut down because I thought to own a business, I have like this straggler hair that keeps, okay, there it is. Um, like this, the, the baby Geo was like, oh, I want a business. And then when I thought about having a business, I thought you had to have like a physical, building yeah you know so i was like oh man i'll never be able to do that and then now i i own several businesses and i'm like oh shit this is it's nuts do you ever get those um what's the thing that i think that would probably shock me as a kid the most well we think about your lowest point like when you were getting kicked out of schools all the time i think you uh i think you were i when you made that phone call to your mom, uh, when you got kicked out for the last and final time and you were like, mom, don't worry. I'm not coming back until I can, sh I can prove to you. No, I think my whole life is a complete surprise to where I thought it was going to be. Oh, explain. Yeah. Like literally everything. I would never, if you asked me like when I was like Even 13, me? 13 to 15, no, no, no. For you, for sure. I already know. But like, oh, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> like That's 13, cute. But like 13, 15, I was like, I don't think there's a, I don't think I would ever thought I was going to own a gym. Although I love training, but like. At owning, 13, you already like training? Or like 15, I did. But like, you know, when you think of gyms from that time, you're just, you're thinking about like Bally's or LA Fitness, like, you know, like just juice bars and stuff. Like I would have never, ever thought I would own a gym. That's like number one. I don't even think when I was 15 that I would ever even be 
doing anything in the public eye because I never was chasing fame or anything. Like, you know, like Tim, he always talks about how ever since he was a kid, he knew he was going to be a star. Yeah. I never thought I was going to be in the public eye. I thought like famous people just were born in famous families or whatever. Or it's like that you're walking on the street and an agent is like, oh oh my God, I see it. Yeah. I see it already. Yeah. So I thought it was like that. And then I never thought that it would even be anything on um, like comedy related. Really? Yeah. Like I'm, I like, like growing, I mean, now that I'm older, I'm like, man, I'm like, I'm a pretty funny guy and I really enjoy just having a good time and like messing around. And I'm like beyond anything, all, all of my traits, I'm for sure comedian first, athlete second. And that's like, that's yes, just, we all know that you're not a fitness guru. Oh my God. No, that's, that's like really who I am. But I would have never thought that, you know, like if I was 15 and someone's like, you're going to be Mr. Funny guy. I don't, I'm like, what really? I'm, that, so and all of that is mind blowing. But what the things that I did know was going to happen was, um, I think for sure I knew I was going to marry a badass woman. And then, um, how did you know that for sure? Cause I wasn't not going to marry a bad, not badass woman. Oh, okay. Like, like, well, I, know, hey, I don't mind I know the type of lifestyle that I want. <laughs> yeah. And the type of lifestyle that I want, I want to be able to shoot with my woman. I want to be able to do, um, like fighting sports with my woman. I want to be able to camp. I want to be able to like backpack across Europe. Like I want to be, we've I, done none of those things together, by the way. I know, but I know I'm, I'm still waiting for the day. So maybe I didn't make a mistake, <laughs> but, um, I, I, I knew I always wanted someone that could like be like second in command in my family. And so if, uh, if oh, the lady is too dainty or then she can't, she can't run, she can't be a part of his empire, you know? Gotcha. She can't be part of his kingdom. I, I should say, uh, even as small oh. as it is, as small as it is, like, let's say I'm a warring, uh, like Native American tribe, like the Iroquois or something. I need like an Iroquois woman, you know, I can't be having no freaking Pueblo woman trying to make clay pots and shit. Yeah. Yeah. So All right. that, in that part, I, that part I always knew. And I, I always knew that I was going to achieve, um, I always knew I was going to be more successful than my parents. And I knew I was going to be more successful than what they wanted me to be too. That part I always knew too. Um, what did they want you to be? And, and, and yeah, what did they want you to be that you were like, nah, dog, it's bigger than that. Um, I think my parents, they, since they wanted me to be like a doctor, I think they wanted me to, um, Did you tell them that you didn't know that the vagina had more than one hole? Because if they knew that from the beginning, they'd be like, oh, my son's not going to be a doctor. No, they know that I know all the holes of the vagina. How many holes does a vagina have? Depends on what day it is. <laughs> okay, good. Good answer. Yeah, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I think my parents, since they, they wanted me to be like a doctor, have some sort of professional degree. I think like the, the the goal of like that Asian mindset is always six figures, you know? And then for some reason, um, I just knew the life that I wanted had to be like a, at least a minimum six figure life. So for me, I just knew no matter what, like if I can't get six figures in 40 hours a week, it's going to be 60, it's going to be 80, but I'm going to achieve, um, I'm going to surpass the level of success that my parents think I'm capable of. I just nice. knew. Yeah. I just knew that. Like my dream, I don't know if I ever told you, but my dream for, um, before like this whole comedy thing, my goal for getting double income was the whole reason why I joined um, the Marine Corps first was obviously I didn't do very good in school. Life. Yeah. And life up until that time. And so I got kicked out of like three, four, five schools. I, didn't, wasn't able to graduate high school. So I needed some sort of graduation ceremony. So I knew I needed to join the Marine Corps for discipline, but even the Marine Corps was just kind of like a placeholder. Like my goal was join the Marine Corps, get discipline, also get the GI bill to help with school, get into college. After I was done with my first four years, uh, go to OCS, which is like officer candidate school so that I can go to, um, either 
they can pay for my medical school or I can go to the military medical school. And then after I do that, I'll be a doctor in the military for a few years. And then when you come out um, and you can have your own private practice, I was going to continue to serve in the reserves as a military doctor so that I can have double income. Like that was my goal. Wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. The whole part was so like, I knew I was end up going to be in the Navy or end up being in the army because there is no like medic or any like medical professions in the Marine Corps because the Navy takes care of the, the Marine Corps. So I knew the Marine Corps was temporary and I knew I was going to end up going, becoming like an army officer or a naval officer or something like that. And then that was like the whole plan. So I just knew that whatever my parents wanted me to do, I'm, like, I'm going to double that. That was like my goal. Wow. Wow. You're so structured already. And we're yeah. talking about like in your 20s? This was my plan when I was like, yeah, like 18, 19. Oh, wow. Yeah. This was I my had plan. no plan. Really? Yeah, I had no plan. I mean, so I, the reason why I say I have no plan is because there was already a plan written for me. Oh, you know, like a lot of us were like, like you already know the order of things of like, of like what life, um, like the safe, the the secure life, right? So yeah. for me, it was like, like get married um, here, have a house here. That's exactly, it. exactly. Like after high school, you have to go to uni, right? Like you have yeah. to hit up a university. You're there for, you know, your four years. Once you're there for the four years, you get your degree. And now you enter the workforce. You work at this job, you save, you work up the, you know, the corporate ladder. And then, uh, you know, you, you hit 25 and now you want to, or like 28 or whatever. And now it's time to get married and then you get married and then you buy the house. And then once you have the house, now you have the kids. And that's kind of it, you know, and like, that was my plan. So um, that's why I just didn't have a plan. Like, I don't know. I I never thought that I was going to obviously be an entertainer, like ever. Um, I was definitely uh, like, it's funny that I never thought I'd be an entertainer. But like, growing up, I was always entertaining. Entertaining, yeah. Yeah, like I was, I was always in dance, or I was um, in choir, or I like I always was on a stage of some sort, like for the longest, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I never thought of it as like a reality because it's not stable, so it's not something that your parents emphasize or want to focus on. So, like for me, I I just my life was already figured out for me, so I'm like, okay, well, I just have to go through the motions. So like the fact that you were like, I'm going to be better than what my parents want. Um, that's, I think that's really cool. Cause I, I was just like, I never thought of being better than what my parents wanted me to be. I just wanted things, you know, like I wanted material things growing up and I'm like that we couldn't afford that. I'm like, I want to get that without, without stress. Mm. So those were like my markers of success. I think guess I guess I have to thank my parents for um, the ability to plan like that then because um, I think my parents always taught me like whatever you want to do, find out what the best is first. Oh, find out what the best is and then see the whole journey and trajectory and then then see which ones fit you and fit like your circumstances and how life is unfolding. So I think like ever since I was a kid, for some reason, I always like, um, gravitated towards the military and thinking about like military school and stuff like that. And so the best military school in the nation is West Point, you know? So like, okay, cool. That's the pinnacle. What do I have to do to get there? And then you have to get your, your state Senator to write a letter of recommendation for you. And I'm like, nah, that ain't happening. So, yeah. that, so that's already like out the window, you know? And then that helped me think about, Oh cool. What are some of the other military academies? Cause people, people don't even know that. Then yeah, that's great. Up, like like uh, Virginia Military Institute. I started thinking about the New Mexico Military Institute. And then there's like the Citadel. So there's like all these other military institutions that people don't even know about. But I think because of that, like uh, that thought process, it always was able to help me go, okay, so if this is what I want to do, what's the best way of doing it? And then what are the other ways like plan A, B, C, D in case the best way is out of reach? 
That's such a cool thing. I'm, I'm yeah. glad you shared that. Um, but let me stop you real quick. I want to introduce our next sponsor. All right. So I get to talk about one of my favorites again, Best Fiends. I play this game all the time because the graphics are just the cutest. Um, it's, a, it's a phone game. And what I love about it is it's super happy. So basically the storyline here is you have your bug buddies, right? Like you have a mosquito, you have a bee, you have a ladybug. Like you have these like, and they look badass. Like they look like they're ready to wreck some shit. You know what I'm talking about? Yep. Um, and what they're doing, their duty is to protect this garden. And this garden is beautiful. Like it has like the most perfect flowers in it. But they're protecting it from these yucky, fat, disgusting, like, like evil looking slugs that all they want to do is just eat your garden all day. And you're just like, what the hell, man? So like you go on these journeys and these journeys consist of like, like some, some of them will be forest themes or then you'll go to like glacier themes or you go to mountain themes or jungle themes. And it's like, it's constantly changing. And I just love it because, you know, all I'm doing all day is, is kind of problem solving when I'm like, I don't know. I just want to unplug. And I don't want to think about stuff and I just want to relax and I just want me time. So best fiends always fills that void because it's just, it's, it's the me time. It's the happy graphics. It's, you know, my mind's still stimulated, but not to the point where I can't sleep anymore. Cause I'm like scratching my head so hard because I can't solve this problem. It's just so relaxing and so soothing. Babe, you see me play it all the time. I'm laying in bed and I'm like, no, let me unwind. And what am I doing? I'm usually playing best fiends. So uh, this is a game that's, Literally for the entire family, like Taika loves watching me play it. He's still too little to play it by himself. But I mean, I started showing him like, no, you, you connect the dots here and like, look, touch these, which ones are the same. So he doesn't necessarily pass the levels, but it's like also cool to like teach him like, you know, look at these patterns, check out this pattern formation or look, you're going to win this way. And he or really what enjoys color is it. This? What color is that? Exactly. Or like, where's the flower or like, what type of flower is this? You know? So it's really, really cool. Even someone like my mom, who isn't the most tech savvy, like she likes playing it, you know? So if you want something fun to do uh, that's going to relax you, that you don't need Wi-Fi for, and you don't need to pay out of pocket for, definitely check out Best Fiends. You can download the game for free uh, on Apple App Store or Google Play. Again, that's uh, Friends Without the R. So Best Fiends. Check it out. It's a lot of fun. And we're back. Um, yeah, we were talking about how you know, you have the mindset of planning because your parents were saying like, always look at the best. Yeah. I think that's really awesome. Like, um, and were they saying that specifically for like your career, like, like, like planning your life or was it just in anything? Um, I think it's mainly just your career, but, and life a little bit, but from that you can apply it to life. Yeah. Well, I mean, it takes a, I think it takes a level of maturity to know that you're applying it to life. But I think when they were giving it to you, it was more for career. Yeah. Yeah. It was, I mean, it wasn't like, oh, you like cars, make sure you look at Ferrari. And if you can't yeah. get that, then you get a Mercedes or something. It wasn't like that. Yeah. It was more like more about what your goals are, what you want to do. And then those are the things that they would like talk to me about. Yeah. And then, and then I think that's why even I joined the, the Marine Corps too, because at that time I didn't understand like all the other crazy jobs that you can get in all the military services. So like when you're just going to the recruiting office and you don't know jack shit about the military, you just go, oh, Marines are the best. So I'm like, okay, cool. If I can join the best right off the bat, why don't I do that? You know? And then later Who on- Who told you find, Marines were the best? That was just like the word on the street. Like everyone knew that. Oh, I and see. I, and I think that's just the common thing that if you talk to normal people that don't, much, that don't know much about the military, and don't know that there's like seals and all like green berets and all these other crazy ass mofos. Um, you just think in big, broad strokes, you're like, Oh, Marines are the best. They're the toughest. Yeah. I always thought, I always thought army was the more popular one. Cause I just knew army, you know, it's the popular like, one is the most yeah, popular. So I, that's sure. why I just thought it was the best. But know? they're not, the, everyone they're, not enjoyed the, the army. they're not the few and the proud. Oh, okay. Here we go. Here we <laughs> Here go. go. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> it's it's the, the the be the best you can be you know you try to be the best but you know yeah but you know that no, you i think be. that's great like uh i'm not one to ever look at my life and have regret you know like i'm not one to ever be like oh man like i wish my parents did this or oh man i wish i did that differently like 
it's really hard for me to think that way because I'm such an optimistic person that, so for example, going like how your parents already knew about the university system. They knew um, like what the top schools were. They kind of prepped you, you know, they kind of like, they prepped you to, to know what the best is. They prepped you to look for the best. For me, I didn't have that. Like I had zero guidance. Like the only guidance I had, uh, and not to say this in a bad way at all, but like the only guidance I had was you better do good in school. You better get good grades. You better go to university. And then you get a job. Like that was my guidance, you know? And like, luckily I had my older sister um, who didn't necessarily guide me because there was such an age gap. Like she's 15 years older than me. So just based on her actions, I learned. Cause she, like when I was growing up and you know, like I, when I started going to junior high, when I was a little bit more coherent, in terms of like, oh shit, like I'm slowly becoming an adult. Um, she was already at a university, already getting her master's. So I just saw that as like, oh, okay, that's the norm. You know, she didn't necessarily sit down or like my parents didn't sit down and talk me through like, these are the things you want to prep for. This is what you want to look for. These are the things you're trying to strive for, you know? Yeah. So like I could sit here and easily be like, oh man, like if I just had that guidance, like maybe I would have been in a different spot or I would have been better or I would be, I, I'd be making more money or whatever, you know? The guidance is so important. My, um, my uncle, you know, my uncle, that's a dentist. Yeah. So like in Taiwan or in a lot of Asian countries, it's fucking difficult to become, a, to get a professional degree like that. Cause unlike this American school system, like it, the, the funny word on the street or euphemism that most Asians call America is they call America the land of fifth chances. Why fifth? Because you can fuck up over and 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 even go in jail and come out and then be successful. So that's so like, that's the euphemism. And they almost like, they almost laugh at America because in America you can fuck up so hard and you can become successful still. Right. But I love it. But in Taiwan, it's like this. If you don't get like a 4.0 and you don't ace your like first to like fourth grade exam, then you're already not going to go to the best elementary school. If you don't go to the best elementary school, chances are you're not going to ace your fifth or sixth grade exam. You're not going to go to the best middle school. And if you don't go to the best middle school, you're not going to go to the best high school. And if you don't ace those, then you're not going to get into the best college. If you don't get into the best college, there's no way you're going to become a doctor, a lawyer, or any of that stuff. Which is why during exam week, you have like eight year olds committing suicide. Because the minute they oh get. Oh my the, God. Yeah, because the minute you get your exam and it's not what you want, and you can already see, like, as a kid, you can see the trajectory of what you want and based on the test score where you're going. So that's how much pressure, like, these um, Asian countries have. And so for my uncle, one of the reasons why he was saying that, like, man, he wished he had a little bit more guidance. Cause he, every, since he's like the first generation doctor, like, um, every single piece he had to earn on his own. So he didn't, he wasn't able to go to the best school in the country, but he went to the best school in, uh, like the city. And that was at least top 10 in the country. So he was still able to become a dentist, but even to, become a dentist he had to he had to take that college exam five times because the first time was like oh you can be a nurse because it was only this high and the second time it was like oh you could be like uh you could be a lung doctor or something oh you get to be a veterinarian okay you get to be x-ray technician so it was like getting closer and closer so my my uncle had to he was like no that i, I gotta be able to do more i gotta be i gotta be get closer to the human body that's what i really want to do and it took him five tries. But what he was saying was all his other classmates that have older brothers and sisters that have done it are so much easier. They can pass notes down. They can talk them how they study. But since he had to figure it out on his own, that's why he's actually really proud of himself. He's yeah. like, for a first time person with both of my parents, not college educated. I don't have a brother and sister. I still got into the best school of the city. Like I'm really, really proud of myself. Yeah. And that's, that's what I'm getting at, you know? Um, where I don't look at what I've, you know, the life I lived and then go, damn, man, I wish I had more guidance. If anything, I'm, I'm obviously proud of myself, 
Cause I'm like, Oh shit. Like, how did I end up here? You know, sometimes yeah. I like, there was this vlog that recently went up on our channel where, uh, and I, and, uh, cause, cause people were tagging me in it. Like they were taking screen grabs and then tagging me. And I thought it was really, really beautiful. But like I was vlogging out in our backyard and, um, and I was like, wow, I can't believe this is my house. You know, like I don't have this like lavish fucking like MTV cribs style of like huge ass mansion, you know, but like, it's not like we have, we have more than what we need, you know? And the fact that like, I have two extra rooms that are empty to, to serve as, to serve like whenever we have guests over, like that for me is mind blowing. You know, the fact that I have a pantry full of all these snacks and shit where I'm like, man, if it goes to, if it, if it gets expired, blah, but I have it there for like Taika or for you or for me or for like when people come over, like for me, like growing up, that was a waste, you know, to have that just sit there. But I was walking out in the backyard and I'm like, holy shit, like, I'm really fucking proud of myself. Like, I, I can't believe that I'm like here today, you know? So it was like, it's like, it's like really, really cool. So I really relate to your uncle in terms of like how he's like really proud of himself. Um, but I really do appreciate like my upbringing because I'm like, damn, this is so tight. Like, yeah, unfortunately, I didn't get the same guidance or information um, that I wish I did because I would probably be in a completely different place better or worse, who knows, you know, who knows if it'd be, uh, what the, 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 the outcome of that would be, Yeah. but I like who I am today, you know? And I, and, I, and I'm just like, Ooh, I'm so excited to like pass down whatever I've learned to Taika. And I can't wait for him to be like, shut up, mom. Ugh, guys, my mom's so fucking annoying. I bet that's what my parents feel about me. They probably taught me all these lessons and they probably watched this podcast. Oh, so now this motherfucker is finally saying, if you want to find a journey, find out what the pinnacle is and then plan your journey. I've been trying to tell them that for years. Yeah. They're watching it right now with subtitles. Yeah. I mean, that's even- They watch like, all your stuff. They do. I mean, that's probably even how they chose to come here, you know? Like they started that, that, they started that whole movement. Like my dad in communist China didn't like it. Probably was looking at some kind of map. What's the best country in the world, you know, at that time? And he was like, I'm going there. You yeah. Know, like if I have to leave my home country, I might as well choose the best one. Yeah. Because there's people that went to Vietnam. There's people that went to like Mongolia. There's people that stopped in Hong Kong or Taiwan. People that went to Canada. And I think at the time he was like, nope, if I'm going to leave, I might as well go to the best place. Damn. That's fucking ballsy, man. Yeah. Yeah. Our parents are, are super badass for that. For sure. Um. Cause I look, and we've talked about this before, but like, I look at just us kind of uprooting ourselves and then like leaving California just to our neighboring state in Nevada. And I'm like, wow, that's so big, you know? But then we think of like our parents, specifically your parents, cause my parents just kind of like went over a border legally. Uh, but yours were like, you, your parents just fucking, it was a completely culture shock completely like like you said escaping communist china i'm like holy fuck that's ballsy man yeah because we think about moving to texas we're like nah too far i know yeah. too far uh but, but for them they're like another country if they need a babysitter what do they do you know it's pretty crazy if you think about it it is, it is. a lot of minority parents have done that yes which is crazy they have, yeah they have they're badass, they man. They they need a they there need there needs to be like a minority parents holiday. You know? Yeah, like what would you call it? Um, I don't know. Get out of my country day. <laughs> Wait, who's saying it though? I thought it was a celebration. Why does it, is it get out of my it country? It is a celebration, but it's still gotta be like the Americans that write it in. So they're probably fine. You want this holiday? Well, I'm gonna call it get out of my country day. That's dumb. Because, you know, like, my dad knows how to cuss in every single language just because he worked at the casino. And it's a very international place. And he's been cussed at by every single race. This, it sounds like your dad doesn't know how to do his job right. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, you know the casinos. It's not like, it's not the cream of the crop there, you know? 
I see. So if people lose money or, you know, like even when people like when you play blackjack and you can tell people when people are playing with their life savings and it's a game of chance and they're blaming the dealer. That's true. You know, it's like, it's like yelling at the dealer, cussing them out. And so like, that's one of the tough things that a lot of minorities or not a, a lot of minority parents have to go through is coming into this country and facing racism from every single other race. Like my dad's been cussed at in Tagalog, in Korean, in Spanish, in white land language, by black people, anything, you name it. He knows how to say everything. <laughs> But he did that. To I want to hear him do it one put, time. To put food on the table. You know, that's crazy. That you know, is crazy. There's so many minority parents that have done the same. Like, even like, think about like the, the Hispanics that work in the back of the kitchen. Like, uh, you know, Asians are racist. Like, imagine the type of shit they hear back there, to, like every single day. Yeah. You know, like Asians are racist and they're not even trying to be racist. They just are. I mean, we all, we are, I think it's just ignorance. Yeah. It really is just ignorance for, for that example that you're talking about. I don't think they're trying to be racist. I think they're just ignorant. Yeah. Like, hey, amigo, come here. And it's like, motherfucker, just call me by my first name, you know? Like, it's fucking Pablo. Just call me fucking Pablo. Don't call me amigo. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, our parents are fucking badass. Um, and, But no, I'm I'm just grateful that, like, that, I don't know, we turned out the way that we did, that I turned out the way that I did without the guidance that I had, you know? So I'm just so excited to like, see what Tyke is going to do. Cause I'm like, he's only going to be better than you and me. Like, isn't that sick? I hope so. True. That's a good point. <laughs> oh, Cause if not, God. we fucked up. <laughs> Fuck. I know. Isn't that scary? Like his outcome is heavily dependent on the job that we do as parents. Yeah. Oh, that's so daunting. But then, the, you know, the epiphany that I had the other day, that's Yesterday? what makes that. Yeah. That's what makes me think like, I don't know. You just gotta, it is what it is, you know? No, you gotta explain that to me, but wait, uh, before you do, let me introduce our sponsor. Shout out to our sponsor, Natural Dog. You guys know how much we love dogs. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, dogs are just like humans where they can have allergies, they can have rashes, they can have different things that irritate their skin. So if you really love your dogs, you got to figure out the best way to take care of them. And if you guys remember Fawny, the reason why we call her Fungus Fawny is she always had this irritation on her belly. And no matter what shampoo we tried, it would always over dry out her skin. And that's why we love the Natural Dog Company because natural dog products are made with all natural ingredients and are vet tested, vet approved, and vet recommended. They're plant based and they're all natural ingredients. They soothe allergies, heal hot spots, and dry flaky patches of the skin and maintain healthy skin and fur. And that was something that was super helpful with Fani because if this didn't work, the next thing we had to do was take it to a doctor and get an expensive prescription. But good thing this thing works. And products made for almost all of your dog's needs, from supplements to skin to paw and grooming products, everything you need to keep your dog healthy and happy. And everything is made in small batches in the United States. Now, as a special, very limited time offer for our listeners, you get 20% off your order from Natural Dog Company. That's right, 20% off your entire order. Just go to Natural Dog Company slash bail. B-E-A-W, that's the code B-E-A-W. Go to Natural Dog Company dot com slash bell to take care of your puppy and we're back uh what were you saying that uh so i was just walking with taika right and i'm all, i always i'm always thinking about parenting what can i do to be a better parent what kind of stuff does taika need same yep and um and then it, i had an epiphany and i was like oh wait kids from broken homes become the celebrities of those from good homes Explain. So if you think about it, right, most celebrities, most idols, Justin Bieber, Lady Gaga, um, Kevin Hart, like you name it, they did not come from like good upbringings. They came from either bad parents, broken home, or some sort of tough struggle. And they end up being the people that have the quote unquote, like good homes, they end up becoming celebritized by them. 
you know? So they, and they end up becoming like their idol. And then, so I'm like, damn, that's crazy. It's like, and then, so some may even claim that those people are more successful, right? So that makes me think like, man, you really just, you, you just can't be the perfect parent because is the perfect parent to have a good home and then your, and then your kids. How the fuck did you just scratch your eyes like that? Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> What the fuck? Do that again? I don't know what I did. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? I've never had that part of my eye be itchy. I think it's my bangs. I have to cut it, get a haircut. All right, anyway, I've never scratched uh, my eyes like that in my life. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I was like, so is it better to have, you know, if you want your kids to be successful? Is it better to have um, to be fucked up <laughs> or is it better to be nice and wholesome? You know, I don't think that has anything to do. I mean, it might. Right. But I don't think that's the point. I think it's uh, not the point. for sure it's not the point and it's not the goal. But isn't that an ironic thing? Well, I don't know how many celebrities, you know, like I don't know how many backstories of the celebrities that, you know, um, that came from parents or like successful people that came from parents that nurtured whatever. I mean, I guess all of these had some sort of nurturing, right? Well, what I'm saying is obviously um, it's a general statement and obviously there's outliers and obviously there's no context. Right. But I'm just talking about in generally speaking, isn't it ironic that that's the case? Like you look at all the greats that passed away before they're 25, right? Like Kurt Cobain, all those guys. Isn't it ironic that the, the, the children from broken homes become the celebrities of those from good homes. That's just what it's, what's crazy to me, you know? I see. Cause Maybe I'm- I, cause as a parent, like I'm sure like Justin Bieber's dad is like, fuck, I wish I was way better to him when he was younger. Right. His yeah. mom, his mom might even say the same thing. Like, man, I, maybe I shouldn't have had Justin when I was so young because she was kind of like a teen mom or whatever, right? But now looking at it now, it's like, did she do everything perfectly so Justin could be the Justin that he needed to be and shine a light on the world, you know? So I'm like, as parents, like, is there a way? Is there the right thing? Like, is, and do your, do, does your effort justify the results? Like, what is it, you know? Yeah. It was just a super I think, deep, ironic thought that I had. Yeah, that is super deep and super ironic. Uh, I definitely have those moments and those thoughts. But for me before, because I, I think thinking that deeply and that like focused and that micro is kind of, um, what's the word? It's kind of like unnecessary for me because it doesn't, at least for me, it doesn't help me in how I'm going to parent. The only thing that I can go based off of is just what I wish I had. The type of kid that I was, and then the type of guidance that I received or didn't receive. And then kind of just taking my own personal experiences with the things that like, you know, the wisdom that I've gained throughout, you know, my 37 years on this planet. And then kind of looking at Taika and being like, well, I think this is the type of little person he's becoming, or this is just how he was born. And then trying to uh, like help him in that way. And I'm just like, fuck, I hope I don't traumatize you too much, dude. <laughs> it is what it is. Exactly. It is what it is. You just don't yeah, know. Where'd you get that from? Where'd you get that from? Because you, you keep quoting it. From my favorite spirit animal, Max Holloway. Yeah, he's a baddie. Who's yeah. Max Holloway? Uh, he's a UFC fighter, former featherweight champion. And I just love, I really love his approach on life. Because um, uh, one of the things that really struck with me is uh, after he lost um, a fight and he lost his title, and he was in the club after party and everyone's like, Oh my God, I'm so sorry, Max. You, you fought so hard. Oh my God. And he goes, what? I didn't die. It's just the fight guys. Come on, bro. And I'm like, Oh man, this guy's just so cool. He goes, he's like, I still got my family. I still got my son. I'm going to go surfing tomorrow. He's like, come on. <laughs> His face is all fucked up. 
Yeah, he's like, I was just a fight. Oh, like, it is what it is. He goes, why people think I died or something? And I just love that about him. You know, you just all you can do is just put one foot in front of the other, have a smile, and that's literally like the key to life. And just goes to show you how talented he is, though. Do you know what really? I mean? Really, what? Yeah, because like, if you have to really fight to to earn that title, and like you have to practice really fucking hard. And like you're proving it to yourself and maybe other people uh, that your champion status, like there's a different mindset. You know, you don't expect to hear such lax vocabulary come out of someone that's been a champion. Yeah. There's that champion mindset, you know, yeah. but he's just so chill about it and so Hawaiian that like it's ironic because usually like champions are like fucking you eat, sleep, drink whatever it is that you're in like that's your that's your world and that's yeah. it and you, you have like blinders on and you're just yeah. so fucking focused that that's why i think it's it's so heartbreaking when you don't achieve you know the that trophy or that title or whatever yeah, or the you, belt you dedicate every second of your life exactly to you're just committed yeah you know so the fact that he was just like hey it is what it is it's like what who who are you dude you're you must be really fucking talented yeah yeah. But damn, can't wait to fuck Taiko up. <laughs> I hope not. But I also feel oh. like we we are no matter what. Oh no, yeah. No matter sure. what, you know? Every time I tell him no and I see his little heartbreak, I'm like, oh, that's probably a scar I just created. You know, or if like, you know, I have some shit I gotta do and I can't really focus hundred percent on what he's trying to tell me. I'm, and and I'm like, Taika, not right now. Wait, give mommy five minutes, you know? I, I'm like, oh fuck. I probably scarred him there. I like uh, when he gets. I like when he gets mad. He goes, oh, I hate it. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I hate that. I wasn't raised like that, and doing that shit was like some TV family shit. Hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. So cute him. though. His wet ass lips. <laughs> yeah. I wonder when those are gonna go away. You know, juicy ass little fucking nasty boy. Yeah. He feels a lot though, which is pretty cute. I don't think I felt that much as a kid. Yeah. He always goes, I'm sad. I'm like, oh, you're sad? I'm like, do you want to be sad? I want to be sad. I'm like, it's okay. You could be sad then. He goes, I'm okay. I'm sad. He just wants to feel it. Yeah. Or when I'm mad at him, he doesn't care if, like, I scolded him. He doesn't care that he's on timeout. He doesn't care if I take away the toy or whatever. Like, he doesn't care about the discipline that I'm giving him. He cares more about my perception of him. Yeah. Which I'm just like, why? That's cute. Like, how do you understand this? Because he's like, mommy, are you mad at me? Mommy, don't be mad at me. Are you mad? Please don't be mad. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> I'm going to pretend because I have to put my foot down. But oh, inside, I just want to hug you so bad. And then I end up hugging him. And then I explain to him what happened. But yeah, he feels a lot. I don't know if I don't know if all kids are born this way, you know? And like, maybe depending on like, the amount of kids you already have prior to this child, you might not be able to tend to it and, and see it. But I wonder if all kids are like this. Yeah. <laughs> Cute ass kids. But anyway, this was a this was a fun, a fun little conversation. Is there anything you want to uh you wanna you wanna close it out with? Nope. Nice. I love it. The wisdom just keeps fucking spewing out of you. Yep. But it is no, what it is. I, I, Exactly. That's, I'm glad that that's, those are some wise words, man. Yeah. Like I think just always looking forward and then just kind of like peeking over your shoulder to be like, Oh shit, I used to be there. I'm not there anymore. Taking your lessons, throwing away what didn't work, keeping what did work and just keep fucking going forward. Cause it is what it is, you know, and just making the best out of your current situation, I think is, um, is all any of us can do. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, no matter where it is that you are in life right now, just, all of that can change, good or bad. So I think you just kind of have to take in the moment and again, just keep what works, throw away what doesn't and just fucking keep chipping away at it. True. Now I'm saying? Yep. All right. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for listening. I also do want to say thank you to our sponsors. So thank you to our sponsor, Skylight Frame. Now as a special offer, you can get $10 off your purchase of a Skylight Frame when you go to skylightframe.com and enter code BEAW, that's right. You're going to get $10 off 
your purchase of a Skylight Frame, just go to skylightframe.com and enter code BEO. That's S-K-Y-L-I-G-H-T-F-R-A-M-E dot com. Promo code BEO, B-E-A-W. And thank you to Best Fiends. Make sure to go and download Best Fiends free today at the Apple App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R. Best Fiends. Also, thank you to Natural Dog. Now, as a special, very limited time offer, for all of you guys listening right now, you guys are going to get 20% off your order from Natural Dog Company. That's right, 20% off your entire order. Just go to naturaldogcompany.com slash bail, again, B-E-A-W, to make sure you get your 20% off. Naturaldogcompany.com slash bail. Naturaldogcompany.com slash bail. All right, guys, last but not least, don't forget to go to barbellbrigade.com. In one week, we drop two more protein flavors. On 12-16, we have the chocolate peanut butter banana. Extremely delicious. Also, just a standard milk chocolate. For those of you guys that want to make smoothies at home, you just need that base. And we still have our horchata protein, which is super bomb. All three proteins have less than one gram of fat, less than one gram of carb. So make sure you go check that out, barbellbrigade.com, and get your swole on, baby, baby. All right. Thank you guys so much for uh, for listening and watching. See you guys next time. Bye.